KJC Ditera, good morning, ma'am. We have a microphone that you can speak through. Good morning, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Nolita Ndungane. I am the chairperson of um, this committee. I would preside over the proceedings of these interviews. Uh, with me, I have uh, members of the panel. I'm sure all the names are clear, but I have Honorable uh, Tabo Meko, Honorable Khwabani, Honorable Squabela, Honorable Khaurekwe, Honorable Dipuko, Honorable Klute, Honorable Van Firen, Honorable Pristorias, um, Honor Honorable Fuku. And we also have um, members of the administration from the institution. Um, Advocate Didira, you are welcome to this interview. Please feel free and comfortable. And if at any point you need water, you have water right in front of you. The purpose of the interview is to know a little bit more about you and your understanding of the role and the responsibility of um, the Public Service Commissioner uh, position which you have applied for. Your interview, ma'am, is 45 minutes. You will be allocated uh, each, a, a question each from each of the members. Um, use your time wisely. Uh, as you expantiate in explaining yourself, you must just rem remember that you, you only have 45 minutes and you would be given uh, three minutes to respond to each question. At the end of the session, you would also be given an opportunity to ask questions to the panel. Um, in those few words, you are welcome, feel free, feel comfortable. And then I'm going to hand over to the first um, member of the panel, uh, Honorable Mego. Thank you. No, sorry before then. Sorry before then. Uh, Honorable Mego, I apologize for that. Um, Advocate Tira, we request you to then give us a 15 minute uh, presentation, which was stipulated in the invite for the interview on the role and the responsibility and your understanding of a public service commissioner. Um, you have exactly 15 minutes, and once your 15 minutes is used up, I will stop you. Thank you. Morning, Chairperson. Can I ask uh, that uh, my presentation be flighted? That is also allowed. Um, they are working on it. We can take only not more than two minutes in administering that. Honorable members, let me apologize for that because um, we were only advised of the presentation now. We would have um, made time for that so that we don't use up more time. Okay. Dada Life, if you can assist us to speed up the process. I can, in the meantime, uh, talk from um, a, a printout. I don't know if the honorable members will be able to follow. Um, I think in the meantime, uh, Advocate, you can start with your introductory um, message and then the, as they prepare. 
with, with, with flighting your document, I think you'll, you'll still be well within your time to continue. Let's start with the introductions for now. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, thanks very much for the interview. I think it's a privilege and an honor for me to be shortlisted for this post. My name is Kuni Ditira. I am born and bred in Plofonte. I studied at the University of the North then, uh, Teflop, where I did my BPOC and my LLB degrees. I then uh, worked in Jobek for five years in Taalia in the Legal Resources Center and also in the Johannesburg Bar. I came to Bluefontein in 1995 and I was appointed as a state law advisor, which I am currently doing. Uh, I have five years experience in the private sector and almost 30 years experience in the public sector. Um, and I was promoted to the post of DDG and then the, the tier uh, in 2006. During that time, I also acted as a CEO of FIFA and also a CEO of Gambling Board. I also acted as an HOD. In June 2010, I was transferred back to the office of the Premier to hit the legal services. I have in depth knowledge and understanding of the public service, having gone up from being a deputy director to DDG. As a state law advisor, I have dealt with all provincial departments and um, some national departments and municipalities, national treasury and DPSA. I give legal opinions, I draft and edit contracts, I draft legislation, uh, I manage litigation in the whole free state, and sometimes you also help municipalities with their litigation. Um, the, 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 the work I do may emanate from the OAG findings. Uh, it may also be HR questions. It may also deal with SCM issues like your beats, etc. The Public Service Commission, the way I understand it, was established by Section 196 of the Constitution. Um, the Commission has 14 members, five of which are in national, and the other nine are in the different province, provinces. Uh, the Commission the Commissioners are appointed by the President on the recommendation of the, of the Premier. Uh, the powers and functions of the Commission are set out in Section 196 and they are to promote values and principles mentioned in Section 195 of the Constitution. Later I'll deal with those uh, uh, values and principles of the public service. They have to investigate, monitor, and evaluate the organizations and administration and personal practices. They, pro pro they can propose measures to ensure effective and efficient per uh, performance of the public service. They give directions aimed at ensuring personal procedures to comply with Section 195 values and principles. They can also investigate grievances of employees. I think uh, this one, the PSC is well known for it. To give effect to 196.4G of the Constitution, the Public Service Commission Act was passed. This act deals entirely with the procedure for the appointment of commissioners 
remunerations and other conditions of appointment. In 2023, <coughs> there was a, a, a bill uh, which was um, going to replace the 1997 Act. It is called the Public Service Commission Bill. This bill was published for comment and introduced in the National Assembly. The aim of the bill is to to remove the, the, the Public Service Commission from the schedule of the Public Service Act because currently it is a, a department in terms of the Public Service Act and also to, to let it be treated as other constitutional uh, um, organizations like your, um, your Human Rights Commission and also to be included in the Public Finance Management Act I do agree with these proposals as it will capacitate the commission and give it more stature and teeth and to emphasize in its independence and impartiality. I'm aware that uh, this bill may possibly have lapsed and will have to be reintroduced in the National Assembly. There is another act which is called the Public Administration Management Act which was issued to promote the values and principles governing the public service administration as referred to in 195. PAMA is also going to allow a seamless transfer between the spheres of government. This will trans uh, assist with transfer of skills because currently the public service is regarded as the province and the national departments the municipality, although it's in the public sector, is not part of the public service. So if you are going to transfer between the three local, the three spheres of government, someone may, may have to resign. So PAMA is going to deal with that. Uh, I, um, now let me do, deal with the, the rules of the Public Service Commission. The Public Service Commission have uh, inter alia issued rules on investigation. I don't know who is dealing that um, at um, slide nine. Yes, uh, the Public Service Commission have issued uh, rules on investigations, on inquiries, and also dealing with grievances, which is a new rule which was published which, which came into effect on 1st May 2024. Also rules dealing with conflict of interest through financial disclosures. As you may be aware, uh, SMS members and members uh, um, and MMS members and also people in dealing with SCM have to disclose their financial interest every year. They, rule, they also issued the rules dealing with governance of the commission. Section 195 of the Constitution provides for eight values and principles gov governing the public administration. Uh, what I, I, I will continuously um, show is that there would be a provision in the Constitution, but that, con con uh, that provision will then have to have a, a, a national act because of the, the rules of subsidiarity. So section 195 gives eight, eight uh, principles, and those are also in the Public Administration Management Act. They are high standard of professional ethics, which uh, PAMA, Public Ad Administration Management Act is dealing with. They also deal with efficient, economic, and effective use of the resources. Thus, you will see that the PFMA is taking it further, PFMA and the Municipal Finance Management Act. Um, it, one of the rules is also that the public administration must be development orientated and services must be provided impartially, fairly, equitably and without bias. That you will find in the Promotion of Administrative Justice Act. It also talk about public participation in policy making, uh, which I, I think the legislature would be 
it will be more relevant for the legislature also for public participation. You will find that in the PAJA, which is the Promotion of Administrative Justice Act. Uh, it must be accountable public administration. They foster transparency through timely accessible and accurate information that will be dealt with the particular principles and uh, It also gives good human resource management and career development. We have a national school of governance, which is taking this further. And uh, it also talks about broad representative public administration, where the Implement Equity Act will then come into operation. The Directives of the minister, uh, which I think are relevant for the Public Service Commission, is that uh, uh, recently the minister issued directives uh, on conducting business with an organ of state, uh, that uh, public servants should not be registered on their CSD, and there's also pre-entry assessment when uh, people are being appointed dealing with ethical conduct assessment, previous dismissals, and reporting false qualification to the SAPS. There is also a directive on HRM and development which for public service prof professionalization, which is a vo uh, volume one at the moment. It deals with pre anti certificate checks, checking uh, that the senior management attend what we call the new gala a training and then there's also a two pre-entry assessment which is a practical exercise and ethical conduct assessment there is also a directive on remunerative of work uh, outside employment as this really will affect the time that the employee is able to give to, to, I see my time is running out. Can we go on? Can we go to the, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I'll also just keep the legislations that uh, uh, I've talked about, the buyer and the budget, if we could go on. Can we go to the, and I've also look, looked at the prevention of organized crime and the prevention and combating of corrupt activities act, which is one of the most important acts that uh, the, the hawks are now using to arrest uh, directors in, private, in pu public and private sector on corruption. If we could go on, it's fine, can we go on? can skip that. Yeah, uh, I just want to look into the improvements that I think are important for the Public Service Commission. I think the, that Public Service Commission bill must be resuscitated. I think the Public Service Commission should do more training and awareness. I know they have stakeholder engagements. And I am of the view that they should be follow up on the recommendation that they have issued and on a quarterly basis report to the legislature on this. Uh, also that the recommendation of the commission must be binding just like that of the, of the public protector because currently they, they, they are just recommendation, they are not binding. They must be binding unless set aside. And I also of the view that there must be consultation with the Department of Basic Education. My issue is that ethics and patriotism, it seems as if that's not people, are, I don't know, is, is ethics religion, is ethics taught? So those are the issues which I think the two departments can work on to, to improve the functions of the commission. Next one. Oh, yeah. I also think that we must make uh, the commission more fashionable. People, if you ask a child, they would like to be a judge, they would like to be a public protector, but I don't think many will say, I want to be a public service commissioner. Uh, and if 
I was to be appointed, I'll, I'll motivate the staff more. I'll do mentor and coaching as I've done it before. And I also think that uh, the commission should analyze the audit findings on nine financial performance. Let us get the annual reports, look at it, and also look at contingent liabilities because that's taking a lot of money. If there is a maladministration or people are being sued for medical negligence, that's taking money from somewhere we could have, we, we could have been used. Thank you. Advocate, your time for your presentation is now up and I will now give over to Honorable Mieko. Chair, thank you. Let's, let's welcome the, I think what I've noted, very colorful academic uh, background, Advocate Tira. My, my question and I think my interest is, is how your life in general, growing up, um, as well as your, your current responsibility has shaped you, empowered you um, for this responsibility that you have applied for. Um, how will the lessons arising from your life and experiences throughout help to optimize the performance of this office? My question will be limited to that. Thank you. Thanks very much, Honorable Mieko. Um, I, I, I was asked a question recently because I'm an author as to um, do, or how do you write for women as a woman. And, and my question was that I'm, I am a woman and that was making me a woman. I, I, I'm not a woman today and tomorrow I'm something else. Uh, my qualifications, my upbringing, it's me. It's shaped the person that I am. I know that I have high, um, uh, I'm honest, I have high ethical values, I, I, am, I have integrity, I'm respected in and outside work and people can vouch that uh, I am don't, I'm not here for a, com, for a, to be liked. I do what is right and I preach what is right, whether people like it or not. Uh, after listening to the premier the other day saying, you must tell us what is right. And I, I said to the DG, DG, I hope premier is telling the truth because I was removed from this dear for telling one premier that this is not the right way, this can be done. So. The way I've been brought up in church and the, 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 the current positions that I'm holding in, 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 that I'm holding in church and in, in, in the society, I'm a social activist. I, I try to assist people who are poor. I think that is, is what is preparing me for this, for this position. At one time, I w wanted to do a PhD on ethics. Um, due to some reasons, I couldn't complete that. But I'm interested in, in I think this post was, I was born for it. I, I, was, I was helped through my studies, through the challenges that, that I've been through to prepare for it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Advocate. The Honorable Van Fieren. Thank you, Chairperson. And let me also welcome the presentation. Um, my question will be on your, your leadership style. Um, how do you think other people see you or your leadership style? And give us an example um, of your leadership skills and set that you've got. 
Thank you, Jay. Thank, thanks very much. <clears throat> Overall, I think uh, um, leadership style is situational. Uh, sometimes I am a mother and I'll, I'll handle uh, the conflict or the situation as a mother. Sometimes I have to be very strict and, and I'll handle that situation in that way. Um, I'll just give a, a recent example of someone who didn't come to work for two days and didn't phone or inform us. Uh, I, when I asked him, why were you, why didn't you report that you were ill? His question, his answer was, did you want me to die in the bus? I said, no, that's not what I was asking. I was just saying, you have been in the public service for a long time. You know the, what the rules are. You must tell your supervisor where you are and when do you expect to come back. Because now you're coming, you have been off for two days. There's no letter, there's nothing. Um, even going to ask HR that to investigate uh, live without pay. So uh, I'm one person who is very strict, who is very professional. I, uh, I'm very punctual and I expect the same from the people I work with. I, I was saying to, when I was welcoming the Premier the other day, that uh, we should start by stopping at the stop sign, whether there's a car or not. We should uh, repair the window in the front of our tambo, which is broken. We should start coming to work wearing clothes as if we are coming to work and not going to Masele Sele or a rugby match. We must get to work on time. So that this, the kind of the, 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 the leader I, I am, I'm able to mentor, I'm able to, to coach, I'm able to, to be lenient, but I'm also strict when the situation uh, requires it. Thank you. Um, the, before that, um, Advocate, you may want to raise your voice just a little bit. Um, then the Honorable Kluter. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, thank you, Advocate, and welcome. Um, what do you think are the some of the biggest challenges currently in, in and trends as well? Challenges and trends impacting the public sector today? Uh, in, the, in, in the public sector, um, currently there, there is a, a new directive which has been issued, um, which is talking about the executive uh, direct directives. Because for me, I, I think sometimes we point fingers at, at the officials whilst they were doing uh, what was asked by the executive. But at the end, the officials are the one who are, who are, being, who are being held liable for those things. Uh, also, I think we have a, a, a lot of policies and and, and and laws, also on ethics, on everything we have laws, but our implementation record is very low. I, I would wish that we would implement uh, our things more, that uh, we, we look at professionalism, that, that for me is very, very important. Uh, when I'm sure you were younger, or when I joined, the public service about 30 years ago, uh, we, we had a different atmosphere or a different environment. We were more professional. Uh, we, you wouldn't come to work wearing a jean and a, and a, and a rugby t-shirt. That's the first thing. You would address people properly. These days, when I see someone in the corridor, I don't know whether to ask them, can I help you? I don't know whether it's an official or, or it's, a, it's a, 
it's someone who's looking for work. I, I just want to bring back the professionalism back to the public service. Let's be proud of our work. Let's do our work. Let's uh, get paid for what we are doing. Let's uh, promote service delivery. Let's assist our politicians to do service delivery. Now we, it looks like we are more politicians than the politicians themselves. Yeah, I see there's some time. Can I ask a follow up? Yes, the fo oh, I'll Thank allow you. the follow up. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Advocate, you spoke about ethics um, quite a few times. My, my, my question to you is do you think ethics can be taught? You did mention education, the department uh, being part of the education, uh, the, the education of ethics. So can it be taught, or is it a, a mere personality trait? Either you have it or you don't have it. It's, it's, it's a question which a lot of people can write a thesis on. Uh, other people will think a religion could help. Others think you can teach it. Other things, it's a personality trait. I, I don't know. I, uh, I, th I, I, but I think we should do whatever we can. If we are able to go back to the schools and just teach children on ethics and patriotism, I, I think it can go a long way. It may not be the only way that you can do ethics. It can also be religion. Yeah, Thank you, also. Advocate. Your time is up. I will now allow Honorable Pretorius. Thank you, Advocate Datira. Advocate Datira, my question is, what is your vision for the Office of the Public Service Commission in the Free State Province? And what changes, if any, would you make to provide a strategic direction to this office? Thanks very much. I think I may have uh, mentioned some of them. Uh, I, I have a vision of, a, of, 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 a, of an office which is known why people know that there is such an office, that there is awareness, that there is training, that we are able to go as the act givers uh, authority to go to the administrations unannounced or announced and, and get information and use that information. Uh, I may be the only one, but I'm not feeling the Public Service Commission office. Um, I only see it when people have, have grievances or, or the, like currently where we had an a, a anonymous tip about what happened at, 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 um, at during interviews. But uh, I really am not feeling that offers. I want it to be known. I want it to be out there. I want it to do its work. That's the vision I'm having. Thank you, Advocate. Is there a follow-up? Or are you done? Thank you. I'll give the Honorable, Honorable Khoban. Thank you, Advocate. Um, I just wanted to check uh, with the audit outcome uh, of the, um, the institution uh, Public Service uh, Commissioner. The audit outcome of 2022, what would be the, the three or five key priorities that could entail on, on financial management, that could entail your 100-day your plan? And what would be, the second question would be, what would be your three-year plan in, in, in terms of, 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 of bringing uh, a certain direction or order to, to the office. Can I ask, ask that you repeat the first question? I didn't really it's, get it. It's, uh, the three, three, three or five uh, key priorities uh, on, on, on in, in the first year on, on, on financial management. Um, uh, taking into consideration the, the audit outcome of 2022. 
Okay, thank you. I, I didn't check the, the audit outcome of, of the public. Service. Sorry, um, apologies, advocate, for that. I think it's actually audit outcomes for 2023. Thank you. I, I didn't check the audit outcomes of the Public Service Commission, so I I really am not uh, will not be able to answer that. Um, if if I have to do a, a, a plan, a, an annual performance plan for the office, I will I will have to look into the what is the current what the challenges are. And also to consult with staff, I am not going to do a three-year plan alone. I'll have to consult and see what is there. Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't look into the to their auditor general report. Are you happy, Honourable Khawane? Yes, yes. And advocate on the three-year plan that he questioned you on, do you want to respond to that? Yes, I, I, uh, when, when, when you do a, a, a plan, you, you look into the M MTSF, what the finances are. You also look at the, at what is there currently and what the gaps are. You will have to do a strategic uh, session to check that. I've checked the delegations which have been given to the provincial commissioners. And uh, one of them is management and investigation of grievances, which I think is one of the chunk, large chunk of what, what the, the what the commission is doing so i will look into that and and uh, uh, as one of the things that i'm going to plan on uh, i like i also mentioned i would really like to con to conduct announced and un on an announced inspection uh, in terms of section 1964a of the constitution and section 9 of the act as one of the priorities that I'll look at. Uh, the other one is the, the, the stakeholder management, getting hold of the stakeholders and, uh, uh, like I said, prior, uh, making our way and training on the functions of the Public Service Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Advocate. I uh, will now recognize Honorable Dipoko. Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, Chair, and greetings to Advocate Ditira, and we welcome your presentation. I have a slightly different question than the rest, Meditir. We work in a very high-pressured environment. Um, I think some of the people you'll be working with are politicians, others are senior management, but in the best interest of the people of the free state. So um, I suspect where in your background, especially work environment, you've met some of these individuals. And um, my question would then be, when, when under political pressure, when politicians and senior management would want to sway you in a different direction, the one that you would not ordinarily come to you as a person. Um, what are principles that you would use um, to arrive at your own personal uh, um, um, recommendations, depending on what is in front of you? But if, if under pressure, especially from politicians and senior management, what principles do you look to to arrive at, at the correct decisions, at least in, in the best interest of our people, and also to assist the committees of oversight of, of this provincial legislation. Thanks. Yeah, thanks very much. I, I'm one person who have worked with all the premiers and all the DGs, because I've been here forever. 
there, there, there is that pressure which sometimes comes, but I'm an advisor. I, I fall on, on the legal advice. I will see how to do whatever I'm asked for within the law, and I may advise um, of another way to do it. I'll make an example. If, for example, um, I don't want to, work to talk about this because I'm a state witness in this case. Maybe let me think of something else. If, if a uh, long time ago there was an MEC, he's late, and he came to us to license um, raising of dogs. And uh, that was not allowed in terms of the law. And we did advise, and the MEC then went ahead. And then we were challenged in court. Uh, it now comes back to me, and I can't go and say HOD, but I, uh, MEC, but I told you so. I have to do my work and see how can we get out of this. There may be technical issues we could use to get out, out of it. Uh, but uh, what, what I want to say is that I, I follow on the truth. Uh, I don't want to do something which my conscience will not uh, allow. I will go into the law and, and, and see how best to do it. Uh, but I, I will not do something which is criminal. I'll not do something which will make me not to sleep at night. I will do my best looking into all the alternatives how to achieve the same objective or a similar objectives, but not uh, uh, criminalizing myself. So that's where I am. I, I will look into how we can assist with service delivery within the law. Is there follow-up? Thank you. I uh, will now recognize uh, Honorable Haureke. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson, uh, and happy Women's Day, Advocate. Thank you. According, I mean Women's Month, like Women's Day, Women's Month. According to your presentation, Advocate, um, you are acting uh, in several departments. Now, as, as, as the Public Service Commissioner, how would you manage the issue of risk? Would you constitute your executive management with what mandate or, or charter, meeting frequently and meeting norms? The question here is about the risk. How are you going? to manage the risk as a commissioner. Uh, thank you. Um, in, in terms of legislation, we must have a, a chief risk officer who, who I will make sure that there is somebody like that. We'll also have to have a, a risk management committee chaired by someone from outside. Uh, from the private sector. Um, you, you, there is different ways to deal with risk. You can accept the risk and mitigate it, or you can avoid the risk. I didn't really get the question as to which risk we are talking about, but uh, uh, with, risk, uh, with risk, you have to look at the risk decide uh, whether sometimes we use the three colors, green, yellow, and red. Is, is it, uh, can we manage this risk and, and what are the things we have to do to manage it? Is the, this risk, uh, can we avoid it? Can we transfer it to someone else? Um, the, 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 that's how I, I understand, understand risk, that you you, you have to decide, uh, can we lift this risk? Can we, can we, 
can we give it to the legislature for example or uh, if if we can't uh, transfer it what what uh, things can we do to 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 manage it and to live with it and to make it less uh, that it doesn't have a lot of impact on our services i don't know if i understood your question correctly Thank you, Advocate. Um, Honorable Squabella. Thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry, let me apologize for that. It's actually Honorable Kavela before Honorable Squabella. Okay, no, that's fine. Huh? Oh, oh, Honorable Fuku. Honorable Squabella is the last one. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, let me also uh, welcome the presentation of um, Advocate Didira. Advocate Didira, thank you very much. Um, can you please tell this panel, Advocate Didira, will you make any changes to the key corporate uh, processes, such as uh, budgeting, planning, risk reviews, or businesses reviews, and why? Thank you. Uh, the, the needs are always more than the budget. Like any household, uh, any organization will always have more needs than the budget we will have to look into the budget and look at the priorities and uh, how, how to do with less than what we have. Um, uh, the, 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 the risk review is something which must happen annually. Uh, on a quarterly basis, we must be able to check how far we are with the management of the risks. Is there things which is still outstanding that we are to do? Um, so on a quarterly basis leading to a, an annual review, we must review our risk and we must come up with a new risk register. Uh, some, some of the risks is because the um, commission is dealing with uh, personal information we must be able to to implement POPIA and see whether we have a, a framework to deal with personal information and how are we handling such personal information. So those could be some of the risks. There's also a risk uh, of, of hacking of information. We are aware that some of the departments and even the private sector have been hacked. So uh, those could be some of the risk. Planning, uh, we, we plan for, for a strategic plan, but we also plan annually where we have uh, um, objectives for the year. And also on a quarterly basis, we must report on, on our quarter on non-financial performance. So planning, it's, 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 a, yearly, it's a yearly planning which is reviewed quarterly and reports are, are also sent to, to the legislatures and parliament to interrogate whether we are still doing what we plan to do. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Um, Honorable Squabella, thank you. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> thank you, Advocate Titero. I've just went through your resume. <coughs> I just want to check. <clears throat> uh, first, <clears throat> aren't you supposed to be on pension according to South African law? And the other question that I want to have is that, <clears throat> in your own opinion, uh, what what do you think, or what would you say are the key uh, stakeholders, uh, key stakeholders? as far as uh, the Office of the Public Service Commission. 
Thanks very much. I, I feel much younger than my age. Um, the pensionable period in the public service is 65 years with the option if you are lucky to get an extra two years. So that's the legislation. I can be able to work until 67. Um, and I'm not, I'm not on pension because I think I still have a lot to give. I have currently just appointed three young people who are younger than 35. And I went when I leave the public service that I would have left all the information I have with them so that they can take the public service forward. The, the, the key stakeholders for, 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 for the Public Service Commission uh, is the organizations and the departments that they work with. It's the municipalities, it's the legislature also, uh, because they also deal with uh, uh, grievances of, of of officials, I think that the trade unions will also be one of the chief uh, stakeholders. Uh, but I also think that we can add to that list. We can include the public. We can include uh, uh, schools, like I said. Uh, so the, the stakeholder list is not fixed, but those will be the main stakeholders. Thank you, Advocate, and I think that brings us to the end of our questions from the panel. I will then um, give you a minute if you have any questions that you would like to ask the panel, Advocate Dutera. Yes, thank you. Um, firstly, let me say thanks very much for, for the opportunity uh, to come and present myself here. My only question is to find out what are the estimated uh, timelines for the appointment of the provincial um, public service commissioner because I'm aware that uh, the posts have been vacant for some time. Thank you. If that's your only question, um we are behind time with this process because um, the process um, was actually initiated um, in March already and due to processes of um, elections and the appointment um, of the new administration, we, it is because of those reasons that we are behind time, but immediately we complete the process, uh, processes, uh, appointments would be done as, as soon as that. Um, Advocate Didera, let me thank you once again for coming and honoring these interviews. But um, I just would also might like to confirm with you um, the contact details that you have provided that uh, nothing has changed so as to have a contact point on how we advise you on the proceedings of today. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. My details are still the same, and thanks very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. And that's end. And with that note, it ends the first um, interview process of the first candidate. And thank you, Honorable Members. We are Jen for 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 5 minutes. Adjournment, smoke break, tea break, bathroom break. <laughs>